Intel next. We have Intel. Basically, I, I just picked one because there was about over the last like three weeks, Pat, there's been like 7,000 announcements from tech companies about various, uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions, sustainability efforts, ESG sustainability reports. Uh, just now this morning, ServiceNow put one out. I think a week or two ago, we saw one from IBM. We've seen them from Amazon, AWS. And so this one happened to come out this week, so I picked it. But at scale, what essentially we're seeing here, Pat, and I think this will really flow nicely into our next topic, is that we are coming to a head in terms of this conversation about companies coming out, making material disclosures about their plans to be uh, doing things for the, the climate, for the world, That's whether it's materials, whether that's uh, manufacturing uh, programmatic changes, whether that's data and accountability, whether that's purchasing carbon offsets. By the way, Pat, the first time ever um, I was booking travel for an event uh, through a booking and I was asked if I wanted to participate in carbon offset credits for my travel. So starting to see companies doing more of this. So Intel basically came out, said that they're going to reduce uh, direct, indirect greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2040. Again, this aligns with what a lot of companies are doing. Some have gone as aggressively as 2030. I think the Paris Accord is looking out to, a, is it 2050? It's it's a longer horizon, but there's yeah. a long, there's this horizon and companies are trying to challenge it and beat it. Uh, one of the things I did like about what Intel did here was 2040 is a long time from now, Pat. I mean, I'm kind of not sure what I'm going to have for dinner tomorrow. Actually, I'm not even sure what I'm going to have for dinner today. And so when you think about a company making a disclosure of a roadmap, for instance, we usually look at roadmaps like we want the chip roadmap for three, four, five years max. Um, so coming out with ESG initiatives that are going to go out over a, two decades is one of those things that I think it gets kind of a wink and a nod and everybody says, great. And then everybody goes, I'm going to be like 100 by the time this is done. So it's kind of trying to, to reconcile that in people's minds. So I like the fact that Intel did come out with some milestones. They did say by 2030, they plan to, for instance, achieve 100% renewable electricity use across global operations. They're going to invest about $300 million in energy uh, conservation at their facilities to achieve uh, what they call $4 billion in cumulative kilowatt hours of energy savings. And then they're going to build all of their new buildings. And of course, you know, they're building all these new fabs to meet U.S. lead program energy saving standards. So um, one other thing that they mentioned in this report is that there's going to be an ongoing increase in effort with its supply chain, its partners up and down to expect and demand more from everybody in their supply chain to participate. Because as we know, None of this happens alone. In a semiconductor, what is there, 50, 70, sometimes 100 different sources of materials and assembly and manufacturing. That's why our supply chain is so problematic right now. So these are all partners of Intel. And then they got all their resellers um, and all the impacts that they have to manufacture the goods, a, a PC or a server. So all that comes together. Um, I like the fact, Pat, that companies are coming out and saying it. I continue to be a little bit skeptical about accountability of how do we really track this to make sure that what companies are saying they're doing. Pat Gelsinger is the say do guy. So I'd like to know how they're going to kind of say do. But I did like that there was a bit of an interim, uh, you know, 2030 goal that's going to be set. But overall, um, still wondering quite a bit personally if all the efforts around climate and ESG are going to be matched with actual outcomes? And at what point are we really going to audit it and, and hold all of these companies' feet to the fire? Good stuff. So I'll first say that I, I see a difference between kind of companies trying to be woke um, and, and say they're doing something, but they don't actually have anything to do with the chemicals, um, the manufacturing plants, right? And then there's the people who are using the man doing actually doing the manufacturing. So and, and Intel, I mean, listen, all semiconductor manufacturers use some very toxic chemicals, right? To do etching, to do cleaning, uh, a lot of solvents and and acids uh, are used here. So chemicals like trichloroethylene, acetone, isopropyl isopropanol and other alcohols like denatured alcohol, you can't just throw those in a river, right? And and so there's a lot of stuff that's done. And 
I think Intel making a proclamation on this to me means more than some of the other companies who they don't actually manufacture. They're distributors. They're they put stuff together, right? Uh, so this is a big deal to me, and and this is why a company like Intel, who actually has to make uh, big decisions and big investments uh, about this, uh, it you know I'm really appreciative that uh, that they would do uh, something uh, like this, and you know, and we're gonna you know I'll, I'll wait for the next topic to kind of dive into kind of some of the hypocrisy that I'm seeing on the on the device side, not necessarily. Maybe we'll hit uh, the data center side uh, uh, another time. Yeah, I mean, again, there's only so much to say. I think the macro trend is looking at each company, looking at each company's contributions, goals, and the way they're being measured, Pat. And and to your point, uh, Intel has a big role to play because of how big their supply chain is up and down.